All right, shalom to everyone. Uh, thank you most high for another day. I'm um, going to get into a very interesting topic um, when it comes down to this Ebola thing again. Uh, this won't be a boring video at all. <laughs> Those of you that don't believe in the Bible, you will believe in it today, I would think. Uh, the reason why I say that is based on the terms um, I'm about to get into, uh, based on some information that was revealed to me, um, and I'm sure some other people probably have been trying to stab at this. Uh, I was talking to a brother a while back, well, uh, yesterday, uh, in reference to trying to find the number, uh, the Hebrew number for Ebola. Um, it's a very hard task. Um, I give credence to this brother, man, because he's very wise. He's like one of the smartest people I've ever met when it comes down to uh, understanding uh, who we are as people and um, so I asked him could he find the number and he couldn't find it so I'm like wow if he can't find the Hebrew number for Ebola then I know I, I'm like I don't think I'll be able to find it so it, it kind of built a little bit of frustration because I know how Satan is he like to have he try to hide things from you hide and go seek and all that so what I thought I would do is try to put out some information today based on what I understand um, in reference to Ebola and I went into some research and I really found some groundbreaking information and it can't be refuted whatsoever so I want you all to, to hold tight those of you that probably don't believe in the Bible you have to probably look at this video at the end because I'm about to bring out the information be because I have to bring out the Bible first because that's what's that's the main issue and we understand the people in Africa and, and you know some parts of other you know places are coming down with this Ebola virus and what does Ebola mean I'm about to get into it in a few minutes but I first want to give credence and respect to the elders all around that understand their heritage the Hebrew brothers um, so let's go to James chapter 5 and I'm starting the 13th verse. I want to go there first to show respect because once you're sick, you're going to have to go to the elders. Eventually, your doctors and all that ain't going to be able to help you because the Most High is going to show his powers throughout these last days. So uh, this is for the elders of all the churches, uh, you know, that believe in Christ. James chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. And it says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. So you're supposed to call to the elders of the church. If you're in the church, you're around the elder. Let them pray for you. Usually, I don't care what you got. If they're of the most high, you will be healed. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the most high. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So availeth much fervent. Those of us, that, you know, those people that have a very high level of energy to be dedicated to the Most High. So I thought I would put that out first. To show respect to those brothers and sisters that can pray for one another, you'll be able to fight off any ailment. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 59. And it says, And the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sickness, and of long continuance. So eventually, what's going to happen? There are going to be plagues in the earth today. I'm going to read it in a few minutes that there's there's plagues going to be in the earth today that wasn't written in the book of the law. There's going to be a continuance. It's going to be continual, a perpetual outbreak of, of disease. Let's go to verse 61. And it says, also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. That's what's going to happen. Then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So that's the reason why you see the word Ebola. I'm going to get into it because there's, like I said before, there's information that it's Hebrew. And I believe it is. But I think the Jesuits and the uh, certain people that have our records, 
have kind of uh, concealed the information so we can't get to it. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 29. I want to read some excerpts of scriptures there so we can understand that it's not just for the Israelites to be played. Because some people say, well, nah, that what you're reading, you got to rightly divide truth. That sickness and the, those plagues were only for the Hebrews and Hebrews only. You're not making sense. Get more biblical knowledge. OK, let's go to uh, I don't want to read the whole chapter. I may have to, but I want to condense this this video. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse five. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse five. And it says, and I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not wax old upon you and thy shoe is not waxing old upon thy foot. Ye have not eaten bread, neither have ye drunk wine or strong drink, that ye might know that I am the Lord your God. And when ye, <clears throat> excuse me, and when ye came unto this place, Sihon, the king of Heshabon, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against us into battle, and we smote them, and we took their land and gave it for an inheritance unto the Reubenites and to the Gadites and to the half tribe of Manasseh. So there are certain things that happen when we were following the most high. Verse nine, keep therefore the word of this covenant. So we're supposed to keep the word of the most high's covenant. And do them that ye may prosper in all that ye do. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captain of your tribe, your elders, and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives. That's very, very deep when it says your little ones and your wives, because What's going to happen is if you're there are plagues being involved and if there's plagues given out, it's going to hit the wives and the children. Your little ones, your wives and thy stranger that is in thy camp. That's why other nations are getting sick today. Because of the children of Israel and thy stranger that is in thy camp from the hewer of the wood unto the drawer of the water that thou should have entered into covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day. So there's an oath involved. Once there's an oath involved with the Most High, he can't break that covenant. That he may establish thee today for a people unto himself. So he's going to establish a people unto himself, people. That's why I want to make clear because some people don't know that, the, that God himself got a people above all people. That's Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 6. And with the Lord thy God and into his oath, which the Lord thy God have made of thee this day, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto, unto thee a God as he hath said unto thee, and as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God and also with him that is not here with us this day. It's talking about the other generation. Verse 16, for ye know how we have dwelt in the land of Egypt and how we came through the nations which ye passed by. And ye have seen their abomination and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. All right, let us skip to... Um, I might as well keep reading. Let's go to verse 18. Lest there should be among you a man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations. Lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood, which is poison. Verse 19. And it come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse that he bless himself in his heart. So what's going to happen is you start to bless yourself or close to blessing the most high, thank the most high, or putting your brother first, but you start to boast in your ways. And it come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart. So whatever you believe you can do, you do whatever you think. And our people do that today. To add drunkenness to thirst, the Lord will not spare him, but the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke smote against the man and all curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven verse 21 and the Lord shall separate him unto evil 
out of all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of the law, so that the generation to come of your children. Skip. I don't want to go too fast. So that the children, excuse me, so that the generation to come of your children, the generation to come, plagues, you got African, so-called African-Americans with sickness, AIDS and all that over here, disease, drugs, alcohol. Then you got our people in West Africa, in the Congos in the 70s, in the 70s when they gave out the first Ebola cases. All these diseases, Tuskegee experiment. So that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you shall rise up after you. Remember, this is written thousands of years ago. And the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plagues of the land and the sickness which the Lord have said, have laid upon it, excuse me. We're going to, go, we're going to get into what they're going to say. Verse 23, And that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning, that is, not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adama and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and his wrath. Even all nations shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Then men shall say, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God their, of their fathers, which he made with them, when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Proverbs 13 and 12. And I'm going to get to the word now in a few minutes about this, this the word, the actual word Ebola, where it comes from, how they do certain things with it to throw you off. Proverbs 13, verse 12. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. What this scripture is saying is when you have faith and it's delayed because deferred means delayed. Hope is faith. Maketh the heart sick. It's talking about making you make your mind, make your spirit sick. You know, you know, because the heart of man is your mind. It make you sick when you delay. But when the desire cometh, but when you have a fervent spirit towards the most high he is a tree of life so if you do catch and i wanted to pull this out because if you do catch a ebola or hiv or anything usually when you you know get your heart right you can recover for certain things all right now let's get into the the, the actual word the, 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 the meat of this on the actual word ebola oh my goodness are y'all ready? Ebola. If you scramble the word Ebola, because that's what I had to do, because I was doing so much research on it, and I certain things start coming to my head, you know, cast your line on the other side. You know, when Christ was talking to the disciples. Why you keep trying to fish on one side of the boat? There ain't get no ain't, ain't no fish over there. Then you learn the first time, you know, so I'm putting my all my energy in just looking one way. Ebola, OK, it's no Hebrew word for it. I don't see the Hebrew word, even though I know it's probably hidden. You know, there's some information out that it links to the word Eber, which I can believe. But the most high led me down a path where it was much, you know, a little easier for me because I'm an analytic. And an, a person that's an analytic goes into details on certain words that's in front of his face or your face. And I totally forgot that that plan to find out certain things that say do. So if you look at the word Ebola, it's this word here, scrambled. Belo. B-E-A-L-O. Now, I did a real soft search, not even a real good one. I mean, I, I, this is how easy it was for me to find out what this what the actual the spirituality of, of Ebola mean. This is what I put in. What does Belo mean? You would not guess in a million years what Ebola what below mean 
harm, evil, malice, baleful, deadly, dangerous, wicked, evil. I wanted to show how I print screen this so you understand that I went through Google because that's what Google is. If you put in the word Google, it's like a million. It's so much information, so much, so many numbers. That's what Google means. So they putting all the information out. So I did another search. Once I found the word below and once I blew my mind, I'm like, what are you kidding me? So it led me down the path of an old English dictionary. You got to find and you can put in old English dictionary online and you, sh you should be able to find this out. And actually what you can do is just once you put in the same thing I put in, what does below mean? You will eventually go to a site which, as you see those listings there, below mean definitions, et cetera, et cetera. So I clicked on an actual link that led me to an old dictionary. An old dictionary got alternative forms. It says Belu. And I want you all to bookmark Belu or B A L L. You mean me make sure I'm spelling it right? Give me a minute here. Balo, B A L L O, or Balu. There's different, uh, I, I would say, linguistics on how you would say the word, pronunciations. Uh, below and then it links you to the word or origin and history proto Germanic so it's or Germanic or Germanic it means evil proto Indo European German men with germs men that want to give people germs German Jewish they are, they're the same words Okay, European, Indo European, to strike, make weak, make sick. Did you see at the bottom what it says? Boli? Is it kicking in people? Ebo? You see that, right? Sick person. Not my words. Let me write that too, because we see that the word you got Ebo. Then it's telling you Boli. That's not a coincidence. Sick person. Okay. Now, is this written in the Greek? Belu. Let's see. B A A, excuse me, B A L L U or A. Links to Greek number 906, which is Balo. Same, same, same thing because it's going to give you the same definition just goes in a little more spiritual in depthness to throw in various applications more or less violent more or less violent there's way like it can be sleepers the way they kill people soft kills or intense then it says arise cast out dung lay lie pour put up sin strike throw down thrust then it links to a derivative 4496 so those of you that do not believe in the scriptures or don't understand how the most high do certain things when it says that the land will be desolate this is what it's going to look like okay how the land was overthrown like Sodom and Gomorrah with brimstone when I read that scripture. So there you have it. We understand that if you scramble the word be, uh, excuse me, Ebo, it will scramble and turn into the word below, which means 
to make a person sick. Sick person. Make sick. Easy to understand. Thank the Most High for that information. Now, uh, I want to give out some information today. Um, there's a there's a sister by the name of Sister uh, Maria Gordon. Uh, she's a very very wise um, uh, young sister when it comes down to like health, and uh, she has a site that I want to actually you know publicize for you all because you know a lot of us we need help when it comes down to health and fitness um sister maria gordon has started a health and wellness program that teaches uh cleaning and eating uh weight loss tips uh she has information about diabetes um information about how you can lose weight so i would you know, it'd be a good thing for you all to go to that actual site. It's www.prosperouslyyours.com. www.prosperouslyyours.com. Uh, she's willing to help anyone. You can, reach, you can reach her. I'm about to put the link at the bottom of this video on in the description box. So hopefully you all go there. Um, so I told her I would, you know, put that information out. Uh, like I said, I, I know her personally. Um, She's a very great person, uh, very peaceful, uh, strong-willed, knows the most high. Uh, so there you have it. So hit me up, uh, thumbs up this video based on this information because, uh, yeah, this is what Satan do. Ebola, below, means to strike a person down. There's another definition that goes into the word striking. There you have it. This is my life and I'll be doing this for the rest of it. Shalom.